So to make those uh, grade beams, I'm just going to go back to my uh, main floor view here. And I'm going to get rid of these uh, detail lines. I don't need those anymore. Always a good idea to kind of clean up your detail lines so that uh, you don't left, you're not left with a bunch of them in the end. Uh, showing up in parts of your drawing, you don't want them to show up. So on main floor view, uh, I'm going to click on wall and then over here in the properties window, the type selector, I'm just going to select the stacked wall. There's usually only one type of uh, stacked wall to begin with in a project. I don't want this particular one, but it's going to allow me to make uh, my own um, modification here. So I don't want those layers. I just click on edit type. It should be right down at the very bottom there. Is anybody not seeing a stacked wall? Okay, we're good. So just uh, click on duplicate and we just want to call this our 360 grade beam. Click OK. And then at the moment, if I, cl if I click on edit, um, you'll see that I can select different types of walls here. So we're going to have to backtrack a little bit. I just wanted to kind of wade into it a bit to show you how this works. I would select a wall type based on what's already built into the project. At the moment, I don't have what I need, which is a 300 millimeter wall and a 350 millimeter wall. So I'm just going to click OK here to accept that that's the way this uh, 360 grade beam uh, stacked wall type is at the moment. I'll come back in and edit it. But first, what I'm going to do is just create those two different types, the 300 and the 350. Uh, I'm going to start off with, well, I actually do have a 300, so I just need to make a 350. I'll start off with the 300. <coughs> and if I click on Edit Type, um, it's probably set to just a default. So I'm going to actually specify that this is made of concrete. So I've started off with 300. I'm going to duplicate this one as well. And I'm going to call this 360. And I'm just going to put GB in here, initials for grade beam, just to help me kind of differentiate it from the other ones. So I'll do 360 GB 300. And then under the stretch, uh, structure row here on the edit button, I'll just click that. And the thickness is fine at 300. I'm just going to specify that the material here is concrete. And I should have up in my document window here, um, a concrete cast in place gray material. This is going to make sure that when I cut a section through this, it's going to show me the actual concrete hatch um, just to kind of help me understand what material I'm dealing with and that it isn't just this uh, cast in place concrete gray beam. I'll click OK to accept that material. You'll see it updates with the hatch uh, and that one's good to go. So I'll click OK again and now what I can do is make another duplicate. So I'll click the uh, duplicate button and this one will be called 360 grade beam or GB 350 and I'll click OK and then under structure all I have to do here now is just change the thickness from 300 to 350 so now I've got two new wall types. I'm going to go back into that stacked wall type that I created. And instead of having those generic kind of brick CMU uh, wall types that came by default with Revit, I'm going to add those two custom grade beam wall types that I just made. And that's how I'll create that configuration there. Uh, so I'm going to click on wall again. And I'll go right down to the bottom so I can select my stacked wall type, which is the 360 grade beam. And now I'll edit the type. And here under structure, I'll click edit. And I'll change the number two bottom layer or base layer from this block on metal stud to the one I just made. So the, the bottom will be 360 GB 350. And then on top, of course, I'll have 360 GB 300. And you can see that they're lining up kind of centered to each other. So just to help me get a better visual reference on this, uh, I'm going to adjust layer number two, the bottom, the base layer. 
I'm going to set its height to 680. And I'm also going to change the sample height here to 800. <coughs> and now all I have to do is just change the offset value here for the top layer from 0 to 25. So remember there's a 50 millimeter difference between their two widths. Uh, they're centered at the moment, so I have a 25 millimeter gap on either side. And if I just enter an offset of 25, uh, then it'll slide them into the right uh, orientation and it should look like this. Okay, so just have a glance on screen to see the values that I've set there. Um, again, the 300 millimeter grade beam wall on top, the 350 on the bottom. Just set the height for the bottom one, which is 680, and then the offset for the top one will be 25. The which, I'm sorry? The flip? Uh, well, let's find out. Um, what does that do? Yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, you made me record that. Now I'll have to edit the I'm not sure part. Uh, I'd have to experiment with that to see what that's about. Okay. Good question, though. We'll investigate that a little bit and find out. Uh, but now I've got that stacked wall grade beam uh, ready to go. And, uh, of course, I want this to come below the level that I'm looking at. So I'd have to kind of manipulate these values a little bit. Uh, for example, I would have main floor as the base constraint set up. But the base offset, I'd want to set that to negative 800. And then the top constraint could just be main floor with a base a top offset set to zero. And now when I click that, I won't see it in my view because I don't have my view range set to show me anything below. So that would be the last step. I could just go down to the view range uh, for this main floor view and then just change the view depth to be say negative 1000. And then that'll allow me to see that grade beam wall that I've created. Okay, now I didn't uh, make any great attempts here to put that in the right place. Uh, the location of this one, you're going to want to have the outside face of the grade beam match the outside face of the sheathing on the wall above it. So I don't have walls in place. I'm sort of leaving it up to you guys to sort of specify whatever type of wall you have there. But the uh, intention here is that the air vapor barrier that's placed on the outside face of the sheathing, you want that air vapor, air vapor barrier to be continuous right down to the grade beam. So that's why you line up those two faces. And then that peel and stick uh, membrane could just be placed continuously from above grade to below grade. 